in this video we will be discussing about the route linking between two different tenant so say in uh, this scenario we have a server one um, which is part of the tenant dc1 and the server two which is part of dc2 both are having different subnet uh, server one is 192.168.10.1 and uh, server two 192.168.20.1 Okay, so for the server one is uh, we have configured EPG 10, BD 10 and uh, part of VRF 10 and server two is in the EPG 20, BD 20 and the VRF 20. Okay, so there is a two way you can have the communication between uh, two server. One is uh, you link the route between two different tenant uh, using the contract. Okay, and if you don't want to use the contract, um then there is another way to do that but in that way in this case you have to keep both the server one and server two into the common vrf so that should be in part of the common tenant so we'll go to uh, both the scenario okay so first let's uh, go to the scenario where both the server is part of the different vrf and the different tenant and uh, we need to have the communication between these two servers so we have already EPG10, BD10, uh, it's configured under VRF10, configured into the respective tenant. Okay, so uh, this is the leaf 103, where I have uh, VRF10 configured, and then 192.16.10.1, and uh, leaf 102, it's a VRF20, where I have 192.16.20.1. If I look at the route, show IP route VRF, I have only 10 series route and the same on the another leaf I do show IP route VRF DC2 VRF20. I have only 192.16.20.0. Okay, so first I need to link the route between the two tenant. So what we'll have to do um So first we'll have to create the contract, okay? So this is the uh, server to which is the provider. Um, so the server which is the provider, well, I have a provider the uh, services that I'll configure the contract. So I already configured the contract permit any, okay? And uh, in the subject is also, I call the default filter. So I'm allowing all kind of the traffic. So I'll go to the contract and I'll export the contract. So I'll give the name contract as a contract. I'll export from um, DC2. So instead of, uh, let me call with uh, BD20 to, to BD10. This is the contract. And the scope you need to use it the global. So the same scope I have used it. Tenant because um, currently I have configured contract in DC2, and I'm going to import that contract into the DC1 tenant. So I'll submit. Okay. So now uh, I'll have to share the subnet. So. Um, so this EPG20 is a provider. So I'll have to configure the subnet into the EPG20. So this is the same subnet, 192.168.20.1 slash 24. And um, we'll click share between VRF. And then we'll go to the DC1. Where the, we'll have to share between VRF into the BD instead of the uh, EPG because this will be the consumer. So I'll uh, I'll submit, okay, and I'll consume the contract uh, which we configured on the DC2 tenant. So I'll go to the EPG10 and the contract. 
and I'll configure it as at consume contract interface. Okay, so this is the contract C B D twenty B D ten submit. Now let's go to the CLI. <coughs> let's check the out of the tenant one VRF ten. Now here we can see the both the subnet 191.6.10.191.6.8.20 and uh, on the leaf 102. Now also we have a 10 and a 20. Okay, so 20 is a uh, local route. Okay, uh, so let's try to do the P P minus V. Sixty eight twenty dot one source earlier one eight one sixty eight dot ten dot one. Okay, so we can do the ping. So this is one way where you uh, can link the route between uh, two tenant. Now consider the scenario uh, where if you have a uh, two tenant and you need to do the communication between two tenant and you have a. Uh, many pg and a bd so doing the contract and licking the loud through the contract between the multiple pg it's a uh, complex okay so another way what you can do is um, you do not need to configure the contract so say here i'll remove the contract from here So I'll uh, let me remove the subnet from here as well from the provider one. And uh, let me remove the contract itself. Okay, so let me go back to the CLI. Now if I check the route. I do have only the 10.0 and same here we have only 20.0 uh, so what we need to do here is um, right now both the EPG and the BD is in the uh, respective VRF tenant um, but another way what you can do is you can uh, configure the BD into the common VRF. So using the common VRF. So I have a common VRF A which is configured in the common tenant. So what I'll do, I'll use that VRF. Okay. Uh, and the same way in the BD20. So I go to the policy. And I'll change the VRF to VRF A. Okay. Now let me go to CLA. Here will not have any doubt because I moved out of route to the VRF A. So if I check the route for the VRF A. Okay, so here I have both uh, 191.6.10 and the 191.6.20, which is in the uh, VRFA common tenant. And the same way here, if I check on the leaf 102, I'll have both 191.6.20 and 191.6.10. So let me just uh, initiate a ping. Okay, so here we can see ping is also working. So based on your scenario, uh, you can use the solution which will fits for your the, uh, scenario. Thank you for watching this video.